guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more Create Above and Beyond. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, getting started today, there is a lot, a lot of stuff that we have to get started with. And this is where things are going to get a little bit more advanced, because we start progression. So, take a look at our questing book. The factory guide here is where everything is sort of going to start, under overview, and right here is where things start. Welcome to the overview. You can always come back here to catch up on your current uh, position in the progression of technology. If you look closer, your journey to the moon completes the final step of the way on the right side. So um, hopefully I read that right. <laughs> but all we needed was a piece of log to complete that. So we did complete that last episode. Uh, but here is where things are going to get interesting. It, it recommends for us to get started to sort of build all of these machines and make sure we have at least one of each of these machines. Um, and then we're gonna end up getting crafting blueprints. which is gonna be pretty nice. I'll show you what those do later. Um, and then also right here, this is just saying, hey, welcome to chapter one. Uh, it says the earliest inventions reveal one resourcefulness with low level equipment. Auto crafting? No. Filtering, not cheap. Item transport? Eh, maybe the belt spaghetti mesh in your favor. Um, so after hitting the check mark above, the first chapter of the factory guide will become accessible from the quest sidebar. So um, the main thing we're going to be working towards completing are going to be these assembly, these andesite machinery assembly things. Um, and that's what we need to work towards. Our main step, I think, right now, though, is just getting andesite in general. Um, so creating andesite is going to be our first step because that's what's going to allow us to make basically everything. And for that, we need alga, uh, or we need alga. <laughs> it's a weird, a weird word. Um, instead of algae, it's uh, algal. So algal instead of algae, um, which requires either kelp or seagrass. And we should be able to use sear, uh, shears for this. Now, I did collect kelp, and I think planting some kelp over there is going to be pretty nice for us early on. Um, so I'm going to grab some of the kelp. But I'm also going to be harvesting mostly all of the uh, the the material that's down here. There, there's there's tons. So if you don't have an ocean nearby, you can collect seagrass, and that's going to work just as well. Harvest from the top down, and you'll get a nice little bonus there. I'm going to be planting a lot of this uh, down here, so that way we have a backup later. And if we need more, we can come down here and just harvest this. It'll be a lot quicker to harvest this versus all the algae that or seagrass that's growing. So while I'm out, I need to also grab myself some gravel, some sand, and, well, clay. Clay is how we're going to actually make the andesite alloy in the first place. That's how we're going to make the bricks here that we see. So many recipes, but we'll get through it. While I was collecting materials, this guy's offering a piece of cactus, like, for literally three emeralds. Also, the globe is really, really enticing, and some melon seeds. Ah. Ah, I think I should probably grab four... That way we can get those melons going and we can also get some cactus going as well. Hopefully he doesn't despawn with me going over here. I, I just got to grab some emeralds real quick and let's trade. <laughs> you can even trade with this guy when it's in, when he's invisible. Let's grab those melon seeds and that's all I really want from you. Perfect. Right as the sun's setting. Now it's time to definitely head back home. So while I was waiting for resources to sort of uh, be processed up, I decided to go ahead and gather some in the mine. But right here, here we go. We have the brick that we need and the andesite. This right here may be manual now, um, but is going to be a lot easier on us later on uh, whenever we have the ability to auto craft this um, with all of the stuff that we're making. So the big thing we need to make right now is kinetic mechanisms. And uh, we have to make them manually. For right now uh, eventually we're going to have an assembly line that's going to be allowing us to make these without doing this process but yeah for right now we're stuck doing it this way um so we do need some stone can we these can be made with cobblestone right perfect so we're going to use this to make ourselves a saw and uh yeah an iron saw very very simple just pop that in like so uh, we could use diamond I'm going to see how, how far this is going to get us. Um, we need cog wheels, and then we also need logs. So I hope this is enough to be able to make several of these. 
So as you can see, we got to craft them one by one for right now. Oh, okay. So it's probably best if we just put the recipe in like so. And the saw is there. <laughs> it just was dis it just disappeared. Um, yeah, and we can go ahead and craft as many of these as we possibly can for right now with this method. Um, so we have kinetic uh, mechanisms, right? We need to craft these using andesite casing, which is going to be a piece of log. Uh, just another another thing that we're going to need. It's another log with some andesite. Let's go ahead and do the rest of the eight. We'll get 16 of these, and then we can surround this in those, and we'll get andesite machines. Now, this is where the fun happens, because with this, we can now create tons of different things with inside a smithing table. So, so long as we provide it with uh, certain items, for example, a saw blade and other things, we can start doing this. I think a, a mechanical press, though, is one of the best things to get early on, so we can actually make the sheets and stuff that we're gonna need for these, uh, like encased fans and the drill, I think requires sheets. Let's see, this just requires a block. Even the saw blade requires that. So yeah, mechanical press, probably the first thing I need to make. It's just a block of iron inside of a smithing table. And what's nice is I left this space here. Perfect, it, 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 it's perfect. It allows for a smithing table, <laughs> which is just what we needed. Awesome, so iron block and then this, just one of these, and an iron block will get us that mechanical press. And this is going to get us started. Now that we have a mechanical press, we need to get ourselves some, some basically ba create going, right? We need a water wheel. Um, so to create a water wheel is going to require a large cog wheel. We're gonna need some shafts, but we have all the stuff for this, right? And we basically have ourselves a press to get up and running. So for my first power setup, it's gonna be three water wheels. Um, I think this is going to be one of the better setups that's going to provide us enough power for quite a few machines. So if I set this up here, all we got to do is say, hey, water wheel. I want you to go this way. That way I can have the water going out. Um, and then on the outside, we actually need this water to not only go over the top, we need it to actually rush under the bottom as well. And this is going to provide just enough power with it flowing right here. And then we need to cover the top with a log like this, just like that. And I can leave this open. Uh, I'm probably going to put like a, a glass thing here. We'll see. On the back, it just needs a place for the, uh, the water to just be trapped in here. So very simple. Just apply that. And we're basically ready. I think this is all we really need. So all we need to do now is get the water sources placed right here. And luckily I have water sources right there. This is actually looking pretty good. Like we have our base water. And then of course this block right here is gonna be where we're gonna be routing power from because it's gonna be hooked directly to it. And then we'll just use other means to uh, get that power routed. So for example, water's going there and bam, we are now harnessing it, but it does need all three water sources to be good. Now you could just use one water wheel, but I'm going with three. Going with three, that is going to definitely be a lot better later on, especially with our stress units that we're gonna be using. So if I want to get this moving and I wanna move it out here a little bit, um, I'm gonna use myself a gearbox. This is going to send the power this way. And then I can actually take this gearbox and let's see, I need the, uh, I actually need a couple of gearboxes. Um, so I'm gonna have a vertical gearbox and a regular gearbox, and that's going to change this. You can see that goes to vertical. Um, and luckily it's just gears and literally andesite casing. So the more of this andesite alloy you can make, the better off you're going to be, because it's gonna make your life so much easier. All right, so vertical gearbox, that's gonna connect here. And uh, what I'm gonna have is a depot in front like this. And then if I put the mechanical press on top of the depot, it's gonna go exactly where I need it to go. And then all we have to do is take a shaft, send that shaft up, and then just use another vertical gearbox. And that should get power flowing directly to the mechanical press. And uh, the mechanical press, if I place down 
iron. And like, as you can see, I just placed the whole stack down. It's going to, well, I guess press it one by one, but it, it will eventually get all of it pressed out. There we go. I think I put four in. And so it should do it one more time and we're good. Now we could speed this up. There are ways, but there we go. On our depot, it's ready to go. And we have all four sheets. Look at that. So we are so close, so close to having almost all of these machines made. I think one one that's gonna help us is, the, of course, the saw, which is the one that I was working on making. We just needed the saw blade. I can go ahead and apply this here. And now I have myself a mechanical saw. To use this efficiently at the moment, I believe a hand crank is definitely gonna be where it's at. I also wanna go ahead and make the, uh, the wrench, which is gonna be super useful. So I slap all these down there, that's gonna get to work. And while that's working, let's go ahead and put this saw to use. Um, now it really works on spruce. That's probably one of the best trees to use it on, especially the big spruce, but I can actually show it to you here. Uh, the reason I wanna make the wrench because it makes it so much easier. If you shift right click on this, it'll place it backwards, right? And if you put the wrench on here, the hand crank, you can actually chop the entire tree down just like that with this. It is going to lay the tree down as if it was chopped down. It'll lay the tree this way. Um, but that's definitely a way of, of getting this done. And then of course, if you have the wrench, you can just shift right click and break these items really quick. It's really, really handy though, uh, for some like early, early tree chopping, especially with these big, tall spruce trees that are always a pain to get to the top of. I would definitely call this like a pro strat. <laughs> I mean, it does consume food, like so your hunger bar is gonna be consumed, but yeah, it just lays everything out. And eventually we're gonna get ourselves a very, very simple auto tree farm set up. And spruce is a really, really good uh, tree to use that on. So just keep that in mind. Oak works as well, because oak, of course, can grow massive trees as well. But yeah, we'll end up having ourselves a nice tree farm set up sooner than later. So yeah, definitely get one of these set up. So let's, get at this point, let's go ahead and get ourselves some sort of ore processing going. It's gonna be very, very simple to set up and uh, I kind of have an idea that's gonna utilize shoots in sort of a vertical method. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our, basically our raw material that we have been generating right here. And we're gonna no longer need to smelt it in this fashion uh, because it's actually gonna get washed. So this is going to get crushed by a mill so all we have to do is get a mill set up and make sure we have the right speed generating for the mill. As you can see, one produces three, and then that three can be washed for two nuggets. So we're kind of benefiting uh, by what? Uh, four extra nuggets per, per zinc, I think? Something like that. Uh, because we normally get what? Three, I think, per smelt. So three, so... So we're literally doubling our operation. So, so yeah, we're, we're going to get three extra per, uh, which is not bad. Not, not bad, especially since in the situation that we're in, uh, we can always use stuff like that. Um, so I do have this working on our encased fan. I think I have everything that I'm going to need for the, uh, the actual millstone itself. So there's the millstone. Uh, and then we have our chutes. That's how we're gonna transfer items. I'm gonna actually use chest to get those transferred. Um, and then we need the encased fan. So we just need a propeller. There we go. And bam, an encased fan. And then we're gonna need some water and a way to set this up. So uh, let me get to thinking about the millstone. Um, so all I need is the millstone and then a chute underneath the millstone. So if I place the millstone in the air and I plan on having an encased fan, let's say right here, for example, which is gonna be kind of weird. Um, I might have to use two gearboxes to get this turning in the right direction, but let's just assume water is here and then our product's gonna be out here. Let me go ahead and sleep and then we're gonna get this built. So we have our fan here. We can place water in here. This is going to blow. Um, I'm probably gonna need a few more cogwheels, but if we just have a chute, Going above this, uh, we need this millstone to go up, what, a couple of blocks? So the chute will be here. Millstone should probably be here. And then a chute above that. 
Like that, and then a chest. A chest of some some sort. And I think that the chute is going to work as a great uh, hopper replacement. It is going to be pretty tall right here. But I think this will all work in the end. Let's see. Let's build up. And then a chest. I should be able to access that pretty easily. And uh, I'll tear that down later. So this right here is definitely going to work. What we have is a gearbox running into another gearbox that's powering the fan. And it's powering it the correct way, which is perfect. Uh, now all I have to do is have a chute on the bottom here that drops out of the millstone. But I need to power the millstone. And this is where things can get a little bit wonky. Uh, I, we do kind of have the, uh, I think, the correct orientation coming out of this. So if we think about this, we need a cogwheel that is in this direction, just like that. Um, but I want to also speed up the cogwheel. And I'm thinking by probably putting the large cogwheel down here and the small cogwheel up here, we should be able to get a faster rotate. Actually, we have to do a little bit more than that because this is now spinning faster. And so I guess a vertical gearbox could do this. And that should be fast enough. <laughs> I know it looks a little wonky, it's actually kind of clean for the setup that this is, I mean, with the limited resources we have. And so I should be able to now open the chest up, put the crushed zinc in here, for example. It's going to auto crush that up and then it's going to get put down here as dust. And then that should get washed into ing uh, yeah, into to nuggets. And there we go. It's been washed into nuggets. Perfect. Um, now, a way to auto-collect this, uh, without filters, there's not a great way to do that just yet. We do, however, have a couple of options. Um, so I can actually take one of these and select any of the different resources that I want. And I want andesite funnels. So I'll take an andesite funnel. What I can do is I can break this down. And we should end up with a distance for which this stops processing. Um, I kind of want to use this right here probably as the best example. So I'll see where does it stop doing its process. So right about here is probably a good, a good point where we can have a chest and I can actually hook an andesite funnel to that. And so let's just say I drop the, uh, the raw in right there. That's actually going to get stuck, isn't it? Um, can I actually throw it directly into the funnel? No, no, I can't. Let's just toss it right in the <laughs> in the middle here. Hopefully that works. I might just put some uh, new stuff there. Hopefully that's enough time and it will eventually get pushed into the funnel. Yep, it changes just in time. And it's not enough to go in or is it? That should collect it. Apparently it's not though. I thought that I thought that's how that worked. Now, I believe this is the point where I really start understanding how create works. I was completely wrong. This does work. So the andesite funnel does work. Um, if you hold shift and place it, now you see the directional arrow. It's going in. If I just click it on, then it's pulling out of the chest. I didn't realize that there was options like that. And so we need the set to insert. And now it will easily accept all of our items. No problem whatsoever. They'll just, we don't have to have it buried. It's, oh, this is so much better. And also it can actually pull from the top as well. Um, so if you shift click on the top or you just place in the top, it will do that same function. That makes our life so much easier here. Quick tip, by the way, if you hit shift K or just K while you have crafting open uh, with this mod that's in here, you can actually compress your your uh, nuggets a lot faster. Definitely a, a pro strat to know. So we only have a few things left on our list of preparations to make, and that is a mechanical mixer and a seared smelter. Both of those are pretty easy to make. 
Um, I might as well, though, go ahead and prep the stuff for the seared smelter. It's going to require sand, gravel, and clay. Not much of it, but just enough that it is, uh, yeah, it, it's going to take a little time to cook. So I am grout. Let's go ahead and <laughs> create this. Oh, man, I wonder, I wonder if that's going to be lost, like a generational thing that's going to be lost. Ah, probably not. Probably not. While that's cooking, I can get my iron sheets a pressing. <laughs> oh man, this is never gonna get old. There's gonna be so many jokes that's gonna end up just yeah, never mind. Yeah, it's gonna lead to a lot. So this is all smelting up. Uh, all we need is the whisk to be able to make this. We already have the uh, the andesite machines, which is by the way super super nice. I mean, if you, look at all the stuff that these actually give you, and they're not expensive to make. Um, so we get utility pole modules. We actually get mechanical harvesters early on like this that we can all make and the portable storage interfaces to be able to allow us to automate crops and stuff pretty early. I think that's what we're going to do next episode is potentially get some sort of power setup that is different from our water wheel that will allow us to automate our crops slowly but surely automate them and get uh, most of them set up because we're going to probably need several. So with that, we should be able to make the whisk and then... Whisk ourselves away with a mixer. Nice. It's not your very expensive mixer. This is your low tech mixer. <laughs> um, I wonder if we can, no, no, this actually requires the gear, right? I was gonna say, can't we just smack that on there? Nope, nope, it actually requires something special. Um, which, I think we could probably hook this up already. I don't know if this is actually spinning fast enough. We're gonna be able to find out though. So. Uh, let's see. Can I just slap a like this next to it and then slap this on it? It's not high enough for one thing. So this does need to go up one. Am I able to stand up here, climb my system <laughs> and place it here? Is that it? I think it needs a cauldron underneath it or a basin. Yeah, all we need is a basin underneath this. And so this is actually going to be pretty helpful for some of the uh, the recipes that we're going to be needing. Yeah, actually, no, it actually works with the lower one, just connecting it to this machine. But is this good? Yeah, it should be going fast enough. So all we have to do is put our mixtures in there. And this is actually going uh, fast enough to be able to mix those up. Also, that, uh, by the way, that machine makes one of the coolest noises, in my opinion. It does sound like a paddle actually beating against a wall. So, with this, the only other things we need is some glass. And I think we're ready to go. So, this is going to get us into Tinkers. And I'm assuming this is going to be the early stages of getting ourselves some Tinkers tools. Instead of using our vanilla tools. Um, and Tinker's Tools is going to be definitely an upgrade. Um, but making this is the early, early part of the game. So, Seared Smelter needs a Seared Tank. And then we just make the Seared Smelter. But, uh, unless we find some lava, um, we can't... I mean, I guess we could find lava. There is some down below. Um, you could use a fuel source for this, but I think just going with a Seared regular tank like is probably going to be the best idea. So ideal for metals holding 32 ingots of fluid retains liquid when burnt. Is this, no, this isn't what I'm needing. I'm needing the one that, yeah, this one, the seared fuel tank. Um, so yeah, so with this setup, it's, uh, it's just another one of those processes. Let's see, this will go here and then this will go here. And then we also need a seared drain. Goes like that. And then just enough of this to make like a casting table and a basin. So as soon as this makes a basin, I think the basin is probably where most of this stuff is going to take off. And the basin is made the opposite direction. So we just need one more. As soon as that is done creeping along. There we go. Perfect. All right. Nice. Make that. So we have basically all the things that we need for this. Um, table can go out front. Actually, I think the table is probably one of the the early things and there we go that's set up all we got to do is just get lava luckily we can take this tank with us it's portable we can go down into our mine and grab lava put it into the tank and we're golden look at that i have just the spot for lava this holds four buckets by the way 
So there we go. That should last us a little while. That yeah, quite actually quite a while, considering we're not going to be like automating anything with this anytime soon. So with that, I believe we have completed this and we now get our blueprints. This of course is completed and uh, it's telling us to go over here and it says uh, chapter one, which did unlock a couple of things. We also got a painting. Just from us getting the blueprints, we have ourselves a beautiful painting. I don't think I have a wall. Do I have a wall I can even stick this on? I, yeah, I do, right here. Look at that, we can, we literally, a creeper, you know what, a pig. I think a pig is the best thing to have in here. Look at that beautiful pig. So, what do blueprints do? Blueprints are kind of cool. Um, let's, for example, say we want ore. And uh, we want to take the ore that we get from here. Let's say iron, for example. We can search up iron and take a look at the actual the, uh, the actual iron ingot itself. And then we can set this here. And so when I have the actual nuggets in my hand, I can click on that recipe and auto craft that. So, uh, for example, I have the nine in my inventory. If I click on this, it automatically crafts it. So this is a nice, like, semi-automatic crafting recipe board if you wanted to set that up. And it will just craft what you have in here, which is super, super handy, especially for our, our ingots and stuff. So after unlocking that first chapter, this is all of the stuff that we really want to work towards to complete this chapter one down here. And... Uh, and basically automate things like we want to automate these things here before we really move on to anything else. Um, so this was what was unlocked right here was high aspirations. So we eventually need to get ourselves a wood farm. We need to get ourselves an andesite farm going and a sand farm and ourselves an underwater garden for kelp. Those are all going to be things that are definitely worthwhile doing and uh and then also automating the stripping of logs, cutting and turning them into uh, planks and so on and so forth. This is going to be really helpful for creating a lot of cogs and things like that later on down the road, which we are going to need a bunch of. Well, guys, it is the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video. And that, of course, is going to go to... Wishbone90, thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. I really do appreciate you. And uh, guys, if you're interested in joining my Discord, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. And while you're there, be sure to check out my Twitch live stream. I do live stream over there Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. Of course, once the holiday season is over, I'll be back, back on full-blown schedule, going at it again with crazy, crazy amounts of content. That's, that's just what I do. That's what I do. So if you would click that subscribe button while you're over here, that way you can stay notified when I do publish new videos. And uh, if that notification bell is still a thing, I, I wouldn't mind if you would ring it. That'd be, that'd be really, really, really nice. Also click this, uh, click that like button. It's, uh, it's free to do that. And uh, well, there's, there's no longer a dislike button. So I mean, might as well click the only one that really makes sense to show, show a number. It's yeah, the, the like button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.